This video is sponsored by Lifesum. I can definitely see how people fell in love over this dish. He's doing this to me. <laughs> Good afternoon. I'm uh, relating a little bit too heavy to a Katy Perry song right now. And I would like to not to. I would like to not to feel like a plastic bag floating in the wind. Because I feel like I know what that means now. And it's not great. My mind is just a clutter today. But why? Why? And I found myself in this like weird paralysis kind of thing where I'm just like sitting here having a bunch of things to do and not moving. So let's go try a persimmon. Okay, we're mainly going to make shashuka right now, which is something that I only know about because of watching Love is Blind. Nobody knew you were starting to record. And you're gonna be hearing a lot of sounds. Maybe squeaking a toy, the laundry going, and Stevie just turned on the tea kettle. You could turn it back on, it don't matter. My brand is just shitty. <laughs> just be shitty. <laughs> uh, anyway, gonna be making shashuka, but that will take a while and I'm hungry now and I saw at the store persimmons and I've never had a persimmon before, but I thought they looked beautiful and I wanted to paint them and I felt inspired by the color and the little nubbin on top. So I was like, let's try them. Stevie, you wanna try persimmon? Get in here, Father Christmas. It'll cut off your head. There's no way that your head's gonna be in frame. Yep. <laughs> Here. Uh, maybe. I think I'm neutral about them. It's like a plum or a nectarine. I was expecting tomato. I guess they're good. Persimmons. They just taste like a plum. I don't know if this one was particularly ripe or not. I don't even know what score I would give it. What score would you give it out of six? Three. Just below good. I give it a four. I don't think it's bad, but I would never seek it out. Some of you asked why I started rating things out of six, and it's because Steven went on this big old tirade about why, why, sure did. <laughs> why scoring systems out of ten or five are bad. You want to share with the class? Because if it's an even number, you can't be a middle picker. There is no middle. You have to choose a side. No one can hear you. You're not in front of the microphone. The only thing people are hearing is the freaking kettle going. <laughs> okay. He said basically the number system is so you can't be a middle picker, which is what most people typically do. You know, if something's out of five or if something's out of ten, they pick the exact middle. But if there's an even number, there is no middle. Although, like, as I'm saying it, his logic do, isn't logic. You can do halves. <laughs> Nobody does halves. You love because, like, to me, when you just said three, I'm like, that's the middle. That's because you're, you're used to out of five, three is the middle. But when you do it out of six, Three is below. Three is the middle. Three it's is not, so mid. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. There is no middle. Well, I know that. He's doing this to me. <laughs> so there's no middle. You're right. You have to like lean you either to, to one side. You have to indicate a direction. You're forced to pick. Check this out. Whatever. Let's make some shashuka. Okay. Like I said, I heard about shashuka from Love is Blind. I just Googled it. So season five, Alexa and Brennan their whole relationship was founded on shashuka. And I was like, what is this? Need to know. And then I forgot about it. But then Pinterest reminded me that it was a thing. It's like an egg and vegetable dish, which I'm always searching for new and improved ways to eat eggs. The standard gets very just predictable and we're ready to spice up our life. Spice up your life. So let's just try this whole shashuka thing out and see how it goes and just have a chill what I eat in a day video. We haven't done one of those in a while. Ah.
Okay, the eggs on this are looking a wee bit more gelatinous than I would like, but the edges of the whole sauce situation are looking extra crispy. I don't have a lid for this pan, so that was probably mistake number one. If you're making it yourself and you don't want gelatinous eggs, use a pan with a lid. But I think I'm just gonna call it as far as cooking and plate this bad boy up and see what this is all about. Here she is in all of her glory. This is so beautiful. I almost don't wanna eat it, but I also really, really do. I'm just gonna kinda mix the egg around in the already warm sauce to finish cooking the bits that are still a little bit wibbly. Or just hide them. I don't know what happens here. And we will give this a taste test. How did I not know that this existed? I can definitely see how people fell in love over this dish. This is fantastic. It's just like so comforting and filling and heartier than typical breakfasts. Is. It's healthy. Even the little burnt bits that I made add something to it. A few moments later. Okay, apologies. I just spent the last eight minutes eating this and not talking to the camera at all. And then the battery died. So if you're shifted just a little, that is why. <laughs> but I think I'll give this dish like a solid eight out of 10. And I know we discussed a whole like different rating scale at the beginning of this video, but I honestly, the more I thought about it, the more I was like, Steven's wrong. Why are you rating things out of six? Just seems wrong to me. Although it does kind of make sense. I don't know. Anyways, I love this. It's like everything that I hold near and dear to my heart wrapped up in one dish. You got tomatoes, eggs, cilantro, garlic. Need I say more? So good and I'm definitely gonna be adding this to my recipe box. I've kind of made it my personal mission this upcoming year to cultivate this arsenal of recipes that are healthy and use like less processed ingredients. And this definitely is a winner. I'm also making it a mission to start tracking what I eat. It's just helpful for uh, lots of different reasons. I mean, I'm trying to get enough protein in there, stay under an allotted calorie goal because I would like to lose weight. And all of that is definitely easier with LifeSum. If you didn't know, LifeSum is a nutrition-based app that helps people stay on top of their goals regardless of what they are. It allows you to track your meals, water intake, workouts, etc. They make it really easy to track because they have a barcode scanner. You can scan in food items and then all of the nutritional information is just populated there. It's just super convenient. There's also a huge food database. So for items that do not have a barcode, which is kind of what I'm focusing on this year, things like the persimmon, you just type that in. They have all of the correct nutritional information in there. You just have to put how much of it you had. And what's interesting, if you're one of those people who have a hard time figuring out what to cook or you don't know what you want to eat, you know you want to eat nutritious but you're not sure how, you can start a simplified meal plan, keto or vegan for a week or whatever else, just different diets that you want to try out. They have meal plans for that that give you four pre-planned meals a day to help build lasting healthy habits. Now if you're interested and want to download the app, you can click the link in my description and download it for free. And also if you're interested in upgrading to the premium version, which gives you access to all of the recipes that they have and allows you to customize things like micro and macronutrients like even more thoroughly, like really dial it in. There's a link down there as well. That gives you 55% off the premium version. So huge thank you to LifeSum for sponsoring this video. Now I kind of feel like doing some yoga. Keep this healthy train rolling. This room is great, but it's so gosh darn echoey. I feel like, I feel like, why do I sound like that? I feel like it can never like do any kind of like little talking updates. It always has to be B-roll because it is so echoey in this room. Just coming down the stairs, I came up with a way to rectify this. I think if I bring all my squishmallows, every single last embarrassing one, and put it in here, it will act as some kind of buffer and I'll have a little adorable audience. I'm a baby genius. Hello, hello. The echo is pretty much gone. Sounds a whole lot better. So the squishmallows worked. I would like to make an excuse like, oh, you know when people find out you like one thing and they keep buying it for you, but nope, I bought all of these myself. <laughs> Steven actively discourages 
all my squishmallows because they're everywhere. But now there's like a solid place in here and it makes the echo less terrible. That being said, I think on my yoga regimen, I want to start including like trauma-based yoga. I see all this stuff all the time about like releasing stored emotions and stuff and I've definitely had like a weird like emotional release. <sighs> that sounds like nasty in a way. But like several times when I went in an in-person class to yoga during Shavasana just started like crying at the end of it. So um, I don't know, there is like something to be said for that. So I'm pretty interested in that aspect of it because I think that there's some things that I need to kind of like work through and get over and I'm wondering if this can help. And I know that like if you're looking at it from a certain point of view, it sounds very woo woo. But I've even heard stuff about like stretching the psoas muscle and all of the benefits of like trauma release from that from places like the Huberman Lab podcast, which is not woo woo. It's like science based information. So I'm going to pop on the telly and uh, pick some kind of yoga routine with that in mind. Okay, me and the guinea pigs are having a little snackety snack. Just some cucumbers, radishes, cottage cheese. The guinea pigs obviously aren't having the cottage cheese, but they partake in the radishes and cucumbers. And girl, radishes are slept on. So crunchy, so good. I just got out of the shower, that's why my hair is wet. But me and Stevie went to dinner at a sushi place and I nearly forgot to film it. So that is why you're seeing footage right now of half-eaten rolls. We got a creamy salmon roll and something called a spicy snowflake roll, which has cod and cilantro and it's just glorious. And we also got like the complimentary miso soup and the salad that comes with it, which I forgot to take a video of, but. It's just like basic miso and a little side of iceberg lettuce with orange ginger dressing on it. <laughs> so if you've been to a sushi place, you know. But I love and hate sushi at the same time. Love it because it's delicious, but hate it because I'm usually hungry like an hour later. Hence, <laughs> you just get so full at the restaurant and then it's like gone. I don't understand. But it was me and Stevie's seven months, so we decided to go out to eat. Really, we just any excuse <laughs> honestly but seeing as in January I'm gonna start doing no added sugar for 30 days sushi is kind of off the table because sushi rice has some sugar in it pretty sure everything pretty much has sugar in it so it's gonna be a tough month but I'm curious to see the results of that but because it was our seven months we went out to dinner and also we kind of started doing this like little tradition where we go to Barnes and Noble and Barnes and Noble has more tchotchkes than it does books and I get these little things that are called tato potatoes. They're just like little potatoes <laughs> that are dressed up as stuff. They come in these mystery boxes and this is the one I got this time. It's a little potato in front of the Sydney Opera House. But yeah, that's just kind of a thing that we do. Pretty adorable if I say so myself. But I'm gonna sit here and edit for a while before going to bed. I just wanna thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will see you on the next one. Bye.